What's going on folks? My name is Josh and I am the Outdoor Dude. Welcome back. Thanks for coming to my channel. Today we're here to talk to you about the Griffin Design Schrade SCHF 55. So stick around. Hiking down to my spot. And I have been stopped dead in my tracks by a very prevalent skunk smell. Now guys, I've had this knife for a little over, a little, a little under two years, and I've thrown everything at her that, that I could, and it still holds up. I'm a little bit of a budget gear nut, although I don't mind spending the big bucks if the product is worth it. And um, let me tell you guys, for a budget knife, this knife is worth it. When I bought this knife, I was looking to improve my EDC. I was in the market for a fixed blade, full tang, utilitarian workhorse of a knife for under 70 bucks. After narrowing down my choices from a whole plethora of, of, of options, I, I, I finally um, pulled the trigger on one out of three knives. My three choices were the Ontario RAF 5, the Ontario Falcon, or I went with a cheaper option as a fallback in case I couldn't afford those two at the time if something came up. And that was the Griffin Design Schrade SCHF 55 Frontier. Now, have I mentioned that I absolutely love Ontario, guys? I, I, I just can't. I can't say enough good things about them. I have this bad boy, as you can see, it's pretty well used. And I uh, I love it. I take it every time I go out in the woods, this thing is worth its weight in gold. And let me tell you guys, it is a little heavy. But after extensive research, I ended up pulling the trigger on the straight SCHF 55. And I, I couldn't be more pleased with this knife, guys. And keep in mind, this is after two years of use and hard use. This knife has 1095 high carbon steel, but I think they said it was a titanium coating and it does hold up really well. I've put this knife through as much abuse as my Ontario machete, which has just that black painting kind of Duracoat, maybe it's a little bit textured, but this doesn't hold up as good as that does. It has a grivery handle, which guys, I am not a big fan of. These are kind of slippery and you can upgrade this handle through LMF knives on Facebook. But let me say that the handle shape is fantastic. It's got a great palm swell, an old school style bushcraft type handle and feel, so it feels great in the hand either way you have to hold it. Love the feeling and, and shape of the handle. Just wish there was a little bit more grip. The blade length is 3.55 inches of cutting inch. The handle is 4.12 inches, and the overall length is 7.63 inches. The knife weighs about 6 ounces. The sheath weighs 2.75 ounces. Overall weight coming in just under 9 ounces at 8.75. This knife has a full flat grind, and I've heard some say it transitions into a saber slash high flat grind, which is great for slicing, precision cutting, due to its very narrow profile but is known to possibly roll the edges under very hard use and chopping and stuff like that. Although I haven't experienced that because I think Schrade's Rockwell hardening and their um, factory quality assurance is really good on this particular knife. The knife does have a 90 degree spine, which makes throwing sparks very easy, even with this coating on it. And it also comes with this very aggressive jimping on the top. A, a lot of reviewers out there, a lot of guys out there, weren't very fond of this jimping. They, they say it's a little rough, but for uh, the calloused up working man's hands, this might not be as rough as one would think. The knife comes with this glass filled, they called it glass filled nylon. It's like a plastic, it's similar, similar fit and, uh, and function as Kydex. And they've got these gold rivets in there with a little bit of lashing points for some paracord there if you wanted. And this sheath is ambidextrous. You can actually put this belt loop on the other side. You can even turn it sideways and bolt here to here as a lateral carry, which I'm not a big fan of. Maybe with a bigger belt and it wouldn't wobble when I'm trying to um, pull the knife out of its sheath. But for now, this is the way that I like to carry it. And it's got this almost like vulcanized rubber 
very, very, very tough rubber belt loop. Very thick, holds its shape pretty well. What I like, the pros, right? The, I love the shape and feel of the handle on this knife, although it could be made of a better material. I have some maple burl wood seasoning up that I acquired uh, last year around this time. I'll possibly work up some, fashion up some very, very nice handles for this. Guys, I did an EDC video where I showed that I carry this in my EDC every day, and I really do. I swear by this. I love this knife. I carry it every single day. It's a great EDC budget blade. It's very comfortable on the hip, although Kydex would have been would have been better. I think they tried to save you a little bit of money and give you a little more relaxed price point by going with the non-Kydex sheath. Not a huge downgrade, but a downgrade nonetheless that I will eventually change. It does, does have a little bit of noise, but it is in there very sturdy. And the next pro that I'm a big fan of on this, guys, is size. It's big enough to do some good work for you, but just small enough that it's not very threatening to carry as an open carry in some urban situations and stuff like that. Always obey your local and state laws. I can't, can't stress that enough. We're, we're done with the tabletop review. Let's get into the good stuff. First thing first, guys, let's jump right into the tip test. Oh, I hate doing this with a knife that I actually carry all the time. Ooh. Still feels really good. I don't feel like my hand is going to slide up on this at all. All right, I think that's good for the tip test. Start off by showing you guys some light chopping. This is not a chopper that doesn't have that, that front weight that it needs. got the bite but it doesn't have that forward weight it's very small it's not a chopper but I don't think anybody think that this knife would be a great chopper I knew that walking into this <laughs> now, let, now let's get into the good stuff everybody wants to see right everybody wants to see batoning with this thing even though it's a small knife you don't want to baton things that you can't span the edge of you want to have enough of your tip hanging out to actually hit it so, see, right? Down through that knot. I'm gonna pop down through the knot. Just to kinda, yep, no problem. Now this guy. And ugliness down at the bottom. She held up good on that one, guys. 
look at what I just had to go through. To be honest guys, this, these pieces are a little frozen still. Went down to almost uh, 10 degrees last night. After doing that tip test and banging on just this much of the tip, you would think it would break or something, but this is a very thick, very robust and thick knife. All right, guys, now let's try some cross batoning. You wouldn't, I wouldn't normally do that with this knife, only if I was trying to make maybe um, notches for traps or pot holders or something like that. In, and there we go. Nice little notch real quick. Do some feather sticking. Even after all that abuse, it still does pretty fine curls. Aside from my my lack of uh, aside from my lack of experience. It doesn't want to light, it's all frozen. I wish I had some fat wood or something, but as you can see, it throws a good spark. And that stuff makes great kindling using the spine to scrape the uh, bark off these sticks. All right guys, now who is this knife for, right? I, I'd say if you're a hunter, there are probably better hunting knives out there than just this. If you're a bushcraft kind of guy, there are, probably, there are definitely better bushcraft knives out there than this. If you're just a camper, right, there's probably better camping knives you could go with. If you're just camping, you could probably go with an easy folder like this Kershaw, real cheap, budget minded. I could do some video on that later. If you guys want to see that, let me know in the comments. But guys, this knife, this knife is a middle-of-the-road knife, right? This is a, a knife for everybody 
that does everything, right? Guys, I like to hunt, I like to fish, I like to camp, I like to do simple bushcraft tasks. I wouldn't consider myself a full-on, all-out bushcrafter. I know some of you guys out there uh, in YouTube, you're pretty hardcore about that bushcraft stuff, and I don't, I don't need anybody chewing me out for not doing things right or wrong. I'm not, I'm not proclaiming myself to be a bushcraft guy. Guys, I'm a guy that loves the outdoors. And I like to take little things from things I learn here and there and incorporate them into my everyday life. And, and that's just, that's what I think most of us out there are, right? We like to do so many different things. And this is a knife, this is a middle of the road knife for that guy that likes to do everything. So, when I, at the time of this video, when I, or at the time I purchased it, it was about $37 shipped on Amazon. I will flash up a price of a current price of at the time of making this video of what it what it's listed for on Amazon. So yeah, guys, this is a middle of the road knife for everybody. Hope you like the video, and uh, I hope you keep coming back for more like this. All right, guys, this is where I'm gonna end the video. That was my review of the Schrade SCHF 55 Frontier. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe, and come back for more.